Okay, Pat Love back from Love Healing Hearts. And now our sweet friend Marlene is going to finish her thought. Right. Uh, we're on? <laughs> yeah, we're on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, I was talking about um, I the job as well as, you know, it built faith building. Yes. And, you know, and when we when we look back and you, you take a look at, you know, what you've overcome and what he's brought you through. It's like amazing. And you exactly. Just like tears of joy. And you just That's want to right. cry. That's right. Tears you can't help but cry when you and look back. Instead of tears of sorrow. That's right. Like, at one time, they were tears of sorrow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But as you overcome, they're tears of joy. That's you know? right. So. Very, very true. I had a job like that, Marlene. I worked with these deaf people. It was mm -hmm. a senior, a senior um, home for the deaf, you know, for age of deaf. Mm -hmm. And I loved that job. Do you hear me? Number one, I was learning more and more sign language. And then we got to do all these activities. And I was the activities, you know, planner. And we were just having mm -hmm. a ball. It was like going to work to play. Now, one night, Christmas came. Now, all this time, we all had this, oh, we're all equal type personality. My boss, she was over everybody, and she was just so down to earth, so sweet, so unassuming, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then, the Christmas was coming. Folks were having vacations. Her back was up against the wall, and she had to have somebody deliver some wine. Now... This is not putting down people who drink wine for you guys who do. But this is just showing you how I was operating in obedience. The church I went to at the time taught that drinking was sin. All drinking was sin. So I did not partake in anything they taught against since I was still learning how to walk with God. Okay. Now, so what happened? Here I am at the, at the job. And she calls me in her office and invites me to sit. And she's going to schedule me because she needs me to do something that's really outside of my job description. And she knows that. But she needs me. It's a desperate need to deliver mm -hmm. some wine to the people who have donated to the home. Now, I've got to tell her that I can't do it. And I've always been willing to do whatever they needed me to do. But I could not, mm -hmm. in my good conscience, go against the teaching of my church. Whether I agreed with it or not, I was mm -hmm. working in obedience for obedience sake, not to be legalistic. Mm -hmm. So okay. I told my boss, I'm so sorry, but I wouldn't be able to do it because our church taught against alcohol. And I would be going against my own conscience. Mm -hmm. And she basically became a boss for the first time in all those, all that time I worked there. She let mm -hmm. her boss personality come out. And now mm -hmm. intimidation was, was flooding the air. And boy, I was getting scareder and scareder, but I was sticking to my guns. And mm -hmm. I said, well, I'm sorry, I won't be able to blah, 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 blah. Well, anyway, when we got through, she says, well, I really need you to do this. And um, it's, it's not about your religion. This is about a job. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, she took uh, she took on this whole persona of, of superior position. And uh, I'm sitting there shrinking down in my chair like, Lord, what do I do? What do I do? What do I say? <laughs> And uh, and then she says, you know, basically she laid down the law. Well, this is what we need you to do. I'm really counting on you. So anyway, I'll see you later. Thank you. You can go now. And I'm sitting there. And she looks up at me as if to say, you're still here? <laughs> mm. And I said, um, <clears throat> uh, mm, uh, mm. well, uh, you know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says if you coerce a person into doing something that goes against their conscience not only have they sinned if they do it but you've sinned also because you made them do it 
I mean, I was so scared. And uh, so anyway, but I was all about God. I wasn't playing. I wasn't, you know, she knew where I was coming from. I took those people to church. She even came at times. And I would do my little, you know, half-witted ability of of interpreting the music and all of that. So anyway, when we got through, she said, okay, well, I, I understand. And I said, okay, I'll see you later. Oh, I got out of there so fast. I came to work that Thursday. And she let me come to work. She didn't call me at home. And I know that was the cat. Women have a cat in them that, boy, they know just how to play it. <laughs> and here I come marching to work thinking, oh, boy, the Lord let me get over that. He let me keep my job. And she walked over to me, put her arms around me, all buddy-buddy style. And told me that they wow. had a board meeting. And in this board meeting, they decided they had to let someone go because we were financially tight. And it was either mm. the cook or you. Wow. Yeah, and that was my last day. They sent me on home. I didn't even get to work the day. They sent me home. Mm. Now, wow. listen, that... That day I, I drove home with a few tears running down my face. Mm -hmm. I knew what was up. I wasn't surprised, but I was disappointed. Okay. Right? And I asked the Lord to help me through that. That Friday morning, I get a call from the Pasadena School School Board. Now, at this job, the deaf job, I was working two to three days of work, uh, two to three days a week, two mm -hmm. to five hours a day. It was never a full eight hour day. It was totally part time. Okay. Pasadena School Board called me, asked me if I could start work that following Monday. Okay. On top of that, the hours would double what I was doing. Okay. The pay was higher. And I was in like Flint. I, I'd be working like 30 hours a week. Now, check it out. Check it out. God showed me. It wasn't about legalism. It wasn't about the alcohol. What God showed me was I recognized the fact that you risked it all for my sake. Right. Not for religious sake, for my sake. Yeah. And because you did not want to disappoint me. I'm going to see to it you're not disappointed either. Right. Look at that. I hadn't called yeah. to say, you. I mean, I it had been months and months since I had submitted those applications. Oh, I forgot and see, all about and, them. And, and, and when one door shuts, another That's uh, right. Is open. God and, and honors obedience. Right. He does. He does. He really does. And when you walk in holiness and you walk in righteousness, we, we're not to lean to our own understanding. That's right. Because he'll show you when you take a step back and just observe and watch how things unfold in your life. And when you're going through it, sometimes it's like, oh, my goodness, you've got to be kidding me. Mm -hmm. But when you look and you see the, the blessing right. that was given to you out of that. Right. I mean, you know, and you just know that that's, that was a blessing. Exactly. That was God. Exactly. He said, hello. He, he acknowledged me. You see me doing it. <laughs> it's like, I got you, baby. I got you. I saw what you did for me, and yep, I got you. Yep. I don't care what and they so, do. I got you. Yes. I, and, and, you know, and through my journey, I see it so much. And, you know, when I first started seeking the Lord, you know, it was a struggle because it was a struggle between the flesh and, and trying to walk in the spirit. Right, you know, right. Getting rid of the some of the friends that you know yep. aren't. That's and, right. That's you know, right. Cutting you some of your directions. partners Sometimes loose. You have to let those things go. That's and, right. You know, and it's a lonely path. It is. It beginning. can be lonely. Yes. Because you're going to be brought away from these things because the Lord is going to take you, wash you, and clean you, and cleanse you, and then you know you'll look and see that that spirit that's shining and gleaming and just, you know, so, yeah. It's called, it's called incubating yourself. 
You cut yes, out the old is, music. You cut your partners that's loose. That's what happened. Yeah, that's that's it right. It happened to me. It really did. Yeah. yeah. All the friends were gone. That's right. I'm like, it, this can't be a coincidence. Mm -mm. I mean, mm -mm. it was like everything. All that's at right. the same time. Almost like instantaneously. I kid you not. That's right. Oh, Some people will actually turn against you, too. They will turn against you because they're angry with you because they right. can't do the stuff they used to do with you before, and now you're yeah. a killjoy. And, and they that, resent yeah. Jesus for it. it. It is just the most bizarre thing. Right. Yeah. But, you know, um, sometimes when you're new and you're trying to, you know, grow in strength and, and That's right. get closer to the Lord, you have to leave those people alone. That's right. That's because right. They're not going to do anything but keep you distracted from your goal. And That's your goal right. Is, you know, and they're going to entice you mm -hmm. and try to talk you out of what you're doing. That's hey, right. You don't want to do A, B, C, and D. Oh, you're right. I'm kidding. No. <laughs> and that's something. And yeah. that's something. Yeah. It's, it's like uh, when the scripture says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? That's what separates friends is the disagreement. Exactly. All of it a does. sudden you're diametrically opposed and you don't have the same common ground. They don't want to hear about the Lord and you're exactly. trying to get away from what they're about because you've been about that. Right. You're ready for exactly. a change. And, you know, when they call you for advice and you say, right. you know, you have to, and you tell the truth about their life and, you know, really it's all spiritual. That's right. Spiritual. That's right. All the, the problems that we're having, the things that you go through, everything is spiritual. That's right. So it's all biblically based. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you give advice of wisdom, you know, people are like, oh, I don't want to hear that. I know. Okay. But if you, <laughs> when you say, girl, you know what? You're right. You're right. Uh -huh, yeah, I, I don't blame you. He's wrong. But when you give, you know, that wisdom of righteousness. That's you right. Know, people don't like it. No, they don't. They don't. They'd rather, you know, it, they would rather you say, girl, did you cuss him out? Did you put him in his plate? Did you slap him? Did you throw something across the room? Girl, I would have taken his clothes and set him on fire. You know, they like all that kind of drama. That's exciting. You know, that's why people watch Bloods and Guts and, or in the movies. And it's just the opposite. You know? It is. It is. It's just the opposite where, you know, you literally have to just turn the other cheek and that's right. in another direction. That's right. And people don't get that. They See, it's not gratifying to the flesh. That's that's right. why the Bible says walk in the spirit and shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because the right. flesh wants to tear down. The flesh wants to destroy. The flesh wants to act the butt. The flesh wants to go off and 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 oh my goodness, the flesh is a mess. It is. It is. It really is. And I tell you, I tell you and I say it to myself time and time again. You don't you don't realize how much you're in sin until you take a step back. Hello. And then, you know, you start understanding, reading the word and understanding, and the Holy Spirit starts softening your heart and convicting you. That's, you know, that's that building of a relationship with that's the Lord. Right. That's and so that true. And that saying, Lord, I don't want to do that anymore. That's so true. And repent means to turn away from. That's right. And, you know, in, you turn. In, in the beginning, you know, it may be something it's a process right right of course you know, it's not going to happen like some for some people it may some i've heard people where they said that you know they prayed they prayed and they were instantaneously delivered but for me it was a process mm -hmm. and for a lot of people it is a process right but it's so well worth it though you know it really is it, that's it's right well worth it it's like when I got delivered from cigarettes, that was instantaneous. I felt something lift off my mm -hmm. chest. So I knew I was delivered from a demon of addiction. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, when it came to cussing, that was my daily <laughs> vernacular for years. So I Not fought you. tooth I and you. nail. Are yes, me? me. Yes. I fought tooth and nail for two years to get out of the... <laughs> of the reflex of cuss words just flying out of my mouth when I got angry. I stopped cussing conversationally and socially. But 
I would still <laughs> slip when I got angry if I bumped something or dropped something. So that took the two years. The 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 uh, yeah, the yeah. the uh, what's the uh, the word I'm thinking about? The the instinctive, you know, the the reflex. You know, it's like oh, I bumped mm -hmm. my head. You know what you want to say? Oh, mm. you know. Well, I, that's the part that took me to two years. <laughs> Oh, yeah, girl, I cussed like a sailor. Oh, my. I wow. used to say about our family, we laughed, we joked, and we cussed. It was <laughs> just <laughs> part of our daily vernacular. Yeah, some people do. Mm -hmm. I, I just was never a cursor. But, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, well, see, um, but see, when you are a cursor, that's what makes it more difficult because you have to find substitutes. I'm, th this is comical. And some of you who are struggling with cussing as a Christian, as a born-again Christian, mm -hmm. try some of these tricks. You have to find substitutes. For the word S-H, I, I <laughs> substituted that with crap. So now I say, oh, crap. Well, that works yeah. for me. It may not work for you. You may have to come up with another one. But that's hard enough for me to be able to be satisfied. Okay. Then when mm -hmm. it comes to words like... Uh, you know, when we would say, oh, F you or whatever, you know, forget right. you. You know, now it's forget you. Right, so, right. you know, you can come up with substitutes, but you have yeah. to, like like Marlene said, you have to work at it. It's not something that you can approach casually. You have to really work at it. And it's not it's not a laborious work. It's something you get excited about because it's something in you that has changed, that makes you really want to do better. You want to yeah. stop cursing. You want yeah. to stop sinning. You want to stop lying. I mean, there's something in you that, that has really changed. That's when they say when the Holy Spirit comes in you, now you have been given a new nature. And your right. old nature, if you don't feed that old nature, will die. And the Holy Spirit will be in control and you will be walking in the spirit in time. You'll see. Yes. You'll see. Yes. And that's the most important thing. And, you know, I think people get so confused with that. The whole, the application and work, all of it. And they substitute it for religion. Yes. But yes. this is what it takes. It That's really right. Does. That's right. And now I'm going to tell you guys, we're all going to grow together. If we work at this thing together, we're going to grow. And yeah. Marlene, I so appreciate you talking with me tonight. This has been You're so... You're finished with me already? Huh? You're finished with me already? Just on this <laughs> video. Just on this video. Yeah. We're going to start another one because we're okay. moving to 18 minutes. So we're going to start another fair. one. Yeah. But I appreciate this. This has been so rich. Now, you guys, sit tight. We'll be right back uh, after station identification.